Remember all those Canon lenses that I said we should be getting this year? Well, I've got the embodiments for two macros and most of the super telephoto lenses. And I'll also tell you about a break-in that we suffered last night. This and more after the intro. Hi, I'm Simon. Thanks for tuning in to The Ordinary Filmmaker. Subscribe to get notifications of new videos like this one so you don't miss any news, rumors, gear reviews, or tutorials. And please do it, it really helps out the channel. But to make things a little bit more interesting, I'm giving away a brand new Canon EOS R5 full-frame mirrorless camera to one lucky viewer. Details are in the description down below or you can watch this video here. But please look at the terms and conditions as there are some age and location restrictions. And now for the news. It shouldn't be a surprise that Canon's going to release an awful lot of RF glass this year. This right here is what is expected in 2021. And as you can see, it involves an awful lot of glass, several of which yours truly is looking to pick up. Let me know which lenses you're interested on picking up this year, at least from this list alone. Now, Canon News has an update on some of these providing the embodiments for a pair of macro lenses and most of the super telephoto lenses due out this year. The only super telephoto lens not included is the one yours truly is very excited to get his hands on. You know, the one and only, the 1200 millimeter. Now, I wonder if it's even going to fit on my credit card, let alone if I can put it in the trunk of my car. Anyhow, all joking aside, let's take a quick look at the embodiments for each. I'll start with the macro lenses. The Canon RF 100mm f2 image stabilized STM has a back focus of 21.99 and comes in at 118mm, which is 1mm shorter than the EF equivalent. The Canon RF 70mm f2.0 image stabilized STM has a back focus of 17.89mm and is 95mm long. And now for the super telephoto lenses. The Canon 600mm f4 has a back focus of 103.93 and is 475 millimeters long, which is almost half a meter. I just wonder how long the 1200 millimeter is going to be. Now the Canon 500 millimeter f4 has a back focus of 100 and a length of 411 millimeters. The 800 millimeter f5.6 is the longest with a length of 498 millimeters and a back focus of 158.67. The Canon 300mm f2.8 has a back focus of 76.35 and a length of 273.92mm. And last but not least, the Canon RF 200mm f2 with a back focus of 38.5 and an overall length of 196.01. Now at this point, you might be asking, yeah, but what does back focus mean? And maybe you're a little bit too afraid to ask. Well, here goes. It's the distance between the rear lens group and the sensor. So the Canon 600mm f4 has a back focus of 103.93 millimeters, And that means the distance between the sensor and the rear lens group must be 103.93 to ensure that your subject's in focus. Now, this doesn't affect most of us most of the time, but when you're adding focal reducers or when you're working with broadcast cameras or cinema cameras, or more specifically cinema lenses, it's essential to ensure that your camera and lens are calibrated properly to ensure that your system is truly parfocal. And parfocal means that the lens can keep the subject in focus when changing the focal length. And if your system, if you don't have your back focus matched properly, then what happens as you shift your focal length, then things become a little bit out of focus. Now, if you're interested in picking up the Sony FX3, the cinema version of the very popular A7S III, it's now available on Amazon and B&H. So if you're interested in buying this, please use my links below as I get 2%, which goes back to supporting the channel. And now, let's go behind the scenes. I'm gonna keep this video really short because, well, we had a break-in last night and my neighbors were also affected and it's really getting frustrating. This is not the first year, it's the same repeat offender. And he usually, it's always, I think it's a Sunday, it always happens early on the Sunday. And the guys never get caught. The police can't do anything about it. They say, look, we can't help you. Just, you're just going to have to put up with it. And, and this is what he managed to steal from us. He managed to steal an hour of our time from all our clocks, leaving us tired and grumpy this morning. I know, it's a bad joke, but it's this whole time change thing which really starting to frustrate me. Now, when I was a kid, it was just a minor annoyance, but the older I get, the more annoying it is. I mean, why do we need to change the clocks? Really, what's the point of it? Why can't we leave it on daylight, not daylight savings time, uh, standard time? 
because if we leave it on daylight savings time the whole time, I'm going to be getting up in the dark in the winter and it's not going to be light till around 9.30 ish in the morning and that's just going to make for a really grumpy assignment in the winter time. So I know some of you have already gotten daylight savings removed and some places never had it to begin with which is great. And I think Europe, did, did Europe go, did Europe com completely get rid of it? I think you did. Uh, here in the United States and Canada, what happened a couple of years ago is George Bush, when he was president, he decided to just shift the times, but it's still there. There has been talk in Ontario, Quebec, and New York about ditching it, and I really do hope it goes, but unfortunately, I think they're going to go with just keeping it at daylight savings. And the last thing I need is it being light at 10 o'clock or 11 o'clock at night when I'm trying to get asleep. And of course, pitch dark in the morning in the middle of winter when it's minus 20 outside, and it's still dark. I get to work, it's still dark, and an hour later, it's still dark. So let me know what you think. Do you still have daylight savings? And if you do, do you like it? Do you hate it? Um, I personally hate it. Um, you know what, here's what I'm gonna do tomorrow morning. I'm gonna wake up when I feel like it. I'm gonna ignore the clocks all day long, and I'm gonna go to bed when I feel like it. And tomorrow when I wake up, I'm gonna wake up a good hour later. I'm gonna stay on Eastern Standard Time not Eastern Daylight Time. And then probably by Tuesday or Wednesday, I'll be back into the regular rhythm. But I just, I just hate this whole changing of the time zones. But that's it for now. Don't forget to subscribe. And please subscribe. If you haven't subscribed, do so, please. It really does help support the channel. And if you do subscribe, you have a chance of winning two Angelbird 128 gigabyte AV Pro MK2 V90 UHS-2 SD cards and a dual UHS-2 card reader. Or you could also win a Ulanzi LED light package with accent lights, underwater lights, and various other flat panel lights to light your subject, or as a starter kit for starting your own YouTube channel. I'll be awarding these two prize bundles once the channel reaches 30,000 subscribers, and then I'll be offering up other prize bundles until the channel reaches 100,000, at which point I'll be awarding a brand new Canon EOS R5 full frame mirrorless camera to one lucky viewer. And on that bombshell, thanks so much for watching The Ordinary Filmmaker. We'll see you again soon.